You may know him for his portrayal of the dark Damon Salvatore on the hit television drama, Whatever. The Vampire Diaries. But I just want to deep passenger the great citizens of Mystic Falls using your magical traveler knife, so hand it over. That's gonna be a problem. Five words that make me want to vamp toss my keys into your chest cavity. Little Gilbert, help me in the fight against my dark side and elaborate, please. We can't find it. As in you lost it? As in it's not here. You're right, don't invite me in, because I will kill both of you. But what you might not know is that while he's ruthlessly ripping out hearts on screen as a vampire, he's spending his off-screen time making sure we don't destroy the planet. In 2010, he launched the Ian Summerholder Foundation, and since then, he's won numerous awards for creating awareness about protecting the environment and the creatures that share the planet with us. Joining us now is the actor, model, and environmental activist Ian Summerholder to discuss why he thinks we all have an interconnected role to play and saving and transforming the environment. Welcome to Full Frame. Thank you for having me. Well, it's a pleasure. Appreciate it. How many months, years uh, did it take for you to come up with the title for your foundation? Uh, that was in 2010, so 30, uh, <laughs> 32 years. A lot I think. of people can't pull it off, but you can. I think it took about 32 years. Let me ask you about uh, your philosophy, because it's unique. I mean, it's not just the environment. A lot of people focus on the environment, but you, you, you love animals. It's like this interconnected philosophy that you have. Kind of describe it for people. Well, I think there's a certain, I mean, uh, not even a certain, I think there is such an inter interconnectedness to the world uh, with the creatures that inhabit it, ourselves being creatures, and then the environment. And actually, really quickly, if you, I, I would offer you this. So, typically, when someone says, "What is the environment?" you would say, "Well, it's the natural, you know, the natural world that surrounds us." That's what you would typically think. But I'm just going to offer up a, a little food for thought, a piece of information. If you could imagine the world as the same biological process as us, you know, you say, "The trees are our lungs." If you cut all the trees, guess what? Can't breathe. Um, if you look at the Amazon River system, it's like almost like a carbon copy of the human cardiovascular system. So if you if you if you pollute all the waterways, it prevents you know the organism, so to speak, from getting all the vital nutrients it needs to survive. And so, if you can look at us and our body and our body's types as the same biological process as the as the Earth, you no longer see yourself as a separate component of it. And then, therefore, you say, well. Well, then we should definitely protect this because this is me, it's you. Um, and I, and I, it just is a, it's such a more holistic framework to sort of live in. Not, I don't, I mean, it's not just because I do it, but I think most of the people that I really truly love and respect in this world really understand that. And actually, Deepak Chopra is the one that really illuminated that for me. Because um, I think you inherently know it or innately kind of understand it, but it takes really, you know, Stepping back for a second and looking at it from that vantage point, I think it really lends itself to having um, a substantial amount of truth, and it's a kind of a great way to live. Well, we're here in Southern California. It doesn't take long to get on one of the freeways. Wait, we're not. I thought we were in New York. That's exactly where we are. We're in L.A. I'm sorry to tell you this, but you get on the roads, and the freeways are clogged, so you have time to kind of look around, and you can see the brown sky. I mean, there are great days where it's blue sky, but you can see the smog, and of course. If you watch any of the news coverage from China, you see the smog there. Does that give you more of a sense of urgency, or do you find it depressing? Or, I mean, what does that do to you? Yeah, actually, you know what? It's crazy. I just started working with a company. So you look at all that crap in the air, right? There's actually a company called Viscon, V-I-S-C-O-N, and it's a fuel additive. This amazing guy named Mike Porter created with his, with his team. It goes into the gas, the diesel, and not only does it create more efficiency, but it actually cuts a lot of the emission, the carbon, everything that comes out. I just started working with these guys last week. Blew my mind. I've never seen anything like it in my life. So there are things that we're about to introduce into the world that are mind-boggling, and they're really going to contribute in the immediate now um, mm -hmm. to these problems. China, I spent a lot of time in China, Beijing and Shanghai. Beijing is absolutely insane you can actually see you can almost waft it and uh we're gonna we're gonna figure out ways to clean that up yeah. it's it's not even it's it's imperative you know what i mean but sometimes like even when you watch the news some of the stories i think they get lost because you're focused on one story and one example of course the malaysia airline the the search for wreckage and they say well we found this debris field and you think it's the wreckage from the plane but it's actually it's the garbage out there in the ocean and you start to think about times that by however many, uh, and, and the damage we're doing to the planet. I mean, it, and that story doesn't seem to get as it's, much traction. It's insane. Um, 
and I use that term not loosely, like it is literally insane. Noah, um, Noah just reported um, that there are 44,000 pieces of plastic per square mile of seascape. That's unacceptable. Totally. Um, this is why it's not you and me or anyone in this room, because we're all set in our ways and old. <laughs> it's this next generation. These are the young people. And so that, if what, you know, ultimately what we do is you empower them now with information. That's education. So now they're empowered. They're, they're educated. They're empowered. Now they're activated. And, and, and once you've got information like this and you're super empowered by it, you become compassionate. And, and that's the, ultimately, I think it's the biggest thing missing in our world right now is compassion. Because when you look through that holistic framework, if, you're, if you have compassion, whether it's for this cup or a plant or an animal, all of a sudden, you start living a much different life. Well, and the thing that you say is, I think if you look at it, like you said, it's daunting when you look at it in its totality. And I think a lot of people are frozen. They're like, what can I do? How can right. I possibly have an impact? And yet your argument would be, we all play a role. I had this conversation with Elon Musk, who is a true hero of mine. You know, I mean, Tesla, everything he's ever done is, is really groundbreaking, and he's um, a brother, and I'm, I'm just so honored to be in his presence. But the interesting question is, with battery technology, how, now going forward into the future and trying to cut emissions, how are we going to find all this nickel? How are we going to find all these, source all these elements without blowing off the tops of all of our mountains? Mm -hmm. how, do we, how do we do that? And that's an interesting question. The American car market, for some reason, we think diesel is an awful fuel. Because in America, we think of like the old Peugeot or the old Mercedes with the black plumes right. of smoke. America, that's gone. That doesn't exist anymore. Um, oh, well, diesel's more expensive. Well, you get better gas mileage, and it's actually the same amount as the premium unleaded. These are just, I can't understand for the life of me. Go to Europe, go anywhere else in the world, everything runs on diesel. It takes half the energy to, to refine it. It's the first thing that comes out, I think, like after kerosene. Mm. So it's consumer education. We vote every day with our dollar. You have the power to say, you know what, man? I'm not buying those snacks. That's palm oil from Brazil uh, or Indonesia that was deforested. Right. These are all little things you can do. Um, that make a huge difference, because remember, there's seven billion of us. Let me ask one final question, because we're just about out of time. But I want to talk to you about this series, uh, Years of Living Dangerously. Talk to me about how you got involved in that and what the overall objective is of it. I remember getting the call, and it was uh, the guys from 60 Minutes went to David Nevins at Showtime and said, we want to do a show that's 60 Minutes meets Homeland, but it's true. Celebrity correspondents going into places in the world that are really, really, really in trouble, um, and the overall effects. And they said, you know, they start rattling. My manager starts rattling off all these names. You know, it's Dan, Don Cheadle, Harrison Ford, Matt Damon, uh, Thomas Friedman, Leslie Stahl, um, and you. Wow. And I said, what? I mean, I jumped out of my seat. So the one thing I keep hearing is that switching over to renewables, aren't these electric bills going to skyrocket? New clean energy that's coming online is actually in some places cheaper than existing coal plants like this one. So one well, example, where would that be? Montana, uh, recently a new wind farm came online, and it is cheaper than the existing coal plant, the coal strip plant in Montana. The idea is, is to really expose these stories that are happening right now that need to change um, with really powerful voices behind them. It is truly the most incredible project I've ever been a part of. And uh, it's actually cool that we're where we are right now, because as I was driving down um, the street, I said, man, this, this literally block stretch of real estate has changed my entire life because this is where I got lost and uh, with well, the show. Why? And um, and Vampire Diaries. Oh, wow. Disney and Warner Brothers, the two you know, biggest things. That and now Full Friend. And now Your Full Your life friend. is complete. Yeah, wow. it is complete. How do you like that? I couldn't like it anymore, anymore <laughs> if I tried. Ian, thanks so much. It was hey, a delight. Man, thank you so, and so much. the first time you've been interviewed where no one asked you a vampire question. So take it to the bank. Pretty interesting.